outside of uh, the AMC 16 in beautiful Burbank, California. Was this statue of Batman always here? Is a question. When did when did they get that? Right, well, I'm here with Batman. I don't know if anyone's watching. Did I go live? Uh, okay. So guys, I just saw Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Hello, DTS Dimension Theater. I've never done the uh, after theater reaction before. And we're going to see if going to this parking garage uh, destroys my cell phone's signal. Should I go to the parking garage? Okay. So, here's the thing about me, is uh, everyone, <laughs> Sam Byrne asks, did I give my ticket to a black person? Okay, so here's the thing, and if my, if my, uh, alright, I'm about to go into the parking garage, which is a little bit underground, if my thing goes out, I will be back in two seconds, but hopefully I get a parking garage, and then I will just have to do it up here, even though it's cold. Yeah. Now, are we back? Refresh. Refresh. <laughs> Refresh the uh, stream. All right. All right, we're here. We're here. I don't know where to go, though. I guess I'm just going to walk. Okay. So, I got, I obtained a uh, ticket to the premiere. So, the movie actually, I believe, comes out the 9th. And today's what, the 7th? Uh, Eon says, I don't like what they did to T'Challa. What, killed him? What do you want him to do? <laughs> the actor's dead. Okay. So here's, here's, what can I say? I, I just saw it, so I'm still formulating my opinion. But I'll say this, when I, when I originally went into it, and they said, this is a two hour and 40 minute movie, I said, oh God. Oh, God. I don't know why any superhero movie needs to be more than two hours. Uh, but, I'll say this. It did not feel its length. At no point did I feel, oh, this movie is dragging on. Oh, it's wasting my time. They could have cut it down. They could have dropped some stuff. But I think, ultimately, this movie has... Let me find a place to sit. I think this movie ultimately. I will, let me find a place to sit that doesn't have horrible Christmas ragtime music in the background. All right, hold on. It does not suck. I can say that. It is definitely a solid movie. I gotta get away from this horrible outdoor music. Oh, here he goes. Setting up on the approach. I'm putting way too much pressure on this guy. I don't know if he's going to do a trick. It's a good place to skateboard. Okay, here I go. You want a loan? You can't bring people to Premiere. You're not allowed to bring anyone. It's like a... It's an invite-only situation. Alright, hold on. I'm gonna sit on this. This bench is all wet. This is a nightmare. Can I wipe this bench off? <laughs> this is my movie review where I look for a place to sit. Isn't that exciting? Right, seconds. Well, if no, if I go to my car, the fucking stream goes out because the goddamn it's in a concrete bunker underground. All right. All right. This might be this might be okay. I'm gonna get a little wet. No, it's still way too wet. What's the after credit scene? There's there's a bench right there. I'm gonna use this bench. All right. So there's no after credit scene. I can tell you that. All right, hold on. I feel like I'm just uh, I'm just building this up unnecessarily now. 
All right. So ultimately, Black Panther is a solid movie. I already can see what the certain crowd, the crowd that needs this movie to be bad so they can make endless videos about how bad it is. I can already tell you what they will complain about. Now, I can't do a, an actual review. That's against the uh, that's against the rules. So I can only give basic, a broad overview of what I thought. Uh, some of the CG uh, was very wonky. Uh, like, there, this movie has a lot of different CG pieces. I think we already know that uh, the Atlanteans are part of it. So there's a bunch of underwater stuff. I don't know why they keep doing underwater stuff in these movies. It always looks bad to me. Um, now that being said, I never saw Aquaman. People tell me Aquaman looks good. I should probably finally make time to see it. But this movie, I think all the underwater stuff, all the water effects, uh, just not great. And there's a lot of other CG that was not great as well. But if you look past the CG, cause I'm not a guy, here we go. Here's a nice bench I can sit on. All right. Ugh. I'm not a guy who cares too much about bad CG. Like, yes, it's great if an action sequence looks incredible. Uh, but if it doesn't, I'm really more focused on the story beats. And this movie had a few story beats that were just really strong. Uh, th this, this versus Black Adam is like night and day. Like, Black Adam, after watching Black Adam and then watching this, Black Adam feels so soulless because this is a movie where you actually get to see the director have a hand in what's going on. Like Ryan Coogler, they clearly went, listen man, you know what you're doing, uh, go nuts. And his shots are beautiful. Uh, all the stuff with the Wakandans looks beautiful. Uh, all the, and all, you know, all the makeup and costume design for the Wakandans is just great. So, I'd say this, look, there's going to be people who go, this movie is woke, you know? <laughs> we're always we're always mad at those people. The wokeness in the movie comes, uh, yeah, I mean, but every movie has, like, some amount of politics. The politics in this movie are not over the top. That being said, it is a movie that is kind of made with a black audience in mind. There's some jokes that, you know, black people are probably going to find funnier than white guys. Uh, even some jokes at white people's expense, which you kind of just got to be like, yeah, whatever. You know, we can we can take it. It's fine. I think some people are going to go, I can't believe they would say that about white people or whatever. And you're like, just just go along with it, guys. Shut the fuck up. Um, so ultimately, I'd say this. Look, uh, the movie is... It's... When you make a movie that long, the problem is you can't make two hours and 40 minutes like perfect the whole way through, especially when you're trying to cram all those action scenes in. So it suffers from its length. Like it's clear that if they had had another six months, 12 months for the CG team to clean up some of those action sequences that they could have been a lot more spectacular. Some of the action sequences look a lot better than the other ones. Some of them look like they handed it off to China and they're like, just get it out the door. We don't care. So it suffers from that, but that's just because, you know, again, it's a very ambitious movie. It's got a lot going on. But uh, beyond the CG, behind the costumes, how everything looks, uh, the story beats are very solid. The themes are there. Uh, I was very, uh, I mean, I can't give it away. There are going to be some surprises in terms of characters they use. There's no, well, I don't want to spoil, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but like, I'm going to it being like, I hope like 10 new Marvel characters show up. Like, no, there's not like a bunch of new introductions beyond what you've already seen in the trailers. So you know what characters you're getting going into it. But just the way it deals, it's very much a movie about grief. I mean, the, set, the center of the movie is Black Panther is dead and everyone is real sad. And where do you go from that? And I thought all of that was handled uh, very well. Uh, they did not go overboard with it. They did not give us like a CGI Chadwick Boseman walking in and talking it. No, it was handled respectfully. Uh, it was handled artistically and it was emotionally. I cried about five different times during the movie. 
Uh, I, li I literally, 15 minutes into the movie, I had tears already uh, going down my face. Now, I've explained this. I'm a big baby. I am a huge baby. I've experienced the loss of family members. I've been there. Okay, when you show me a funeral scene and a family grieving a lo loved one, you know, I'm just like, I get it, you know, I get it and I'm there. And this movie, if you're someone like that, where, you know, that kind of stuff hits you and you feel it. But even some of the stuff that hit me, it wasn't, o it wasn't all about Black Panther's death, just some of the themes. I was like, wow, this is, you know, a community that's dealing with loss. You know, what do you do? Uh, and the, the girl, whoever plays Sherry, and I should have looked up her name before I looked it up, she's fucking incredible. I don't even care that she's a weird anti-vaxxer psycho. Uh, like, the emotion that she shows, the grief of losing her family, because remember, she lost her dad, the king, and she loses her brother, uh, Black Panther, and I won't give it away, but that's not the end of her uh, grief. Latila Wright, yeah, I was, she, like... When she, whenever she like lost it emotionally, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, this movie's gonna make me cry again. I'm like, poor little girl, stop, don't cry. I'll be your new brother. I'll be the new Black Panther. I'll take care of you. Uh, Cause she just emotes fantastically. The people around her emote fantastically. This is a very emotional movie. It is very much, well, I'm not even gonna say, and, 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 but the other thing is it's not even that the movie gets bogged down as a tribute to T'Challa. Like that's, it's definitely a part of the movie but it does establish its own identity. Uh, the one thing I'm gonna say, and uh, I don't know if this is controversial, uh, did not like Namor. Now, I might have, I might have a big bias uh, because I think the comic book version of Namor is an incredible character, is, is so profoundly interesting as this like very regal, demanding king type character who, even if he is in the wrong, just his sheer conviction in being right is so interesting and his unwillingness to bend to anything and going, no, this is the way we do it uh, in Atlantis or whatever else. Like, I, I just find him more interesting. I also find the comic book Namor's uh, design more interesting, where he's just like a little swimmer guy who has incredible strength. And you're like, that would be terrifying. Imagine a little guy you're like, oh, look at that little guy, that little tiny guy. And then he lifts up a fucking car, and you're like, Jesus Christ, he's going to fucking kill me. Like, that's way more terrifying to me than this big jacked dude they got to play Namor. Um, but in this movie, Namor, he, he doesn't command the same amount of, like, respect me, I am the king. What You know, like, I wanted more a more regal presence from him. He's kind of just, it, it, the problem is he's kind of dumb. He comes off as a uh, naive, uh, like cartoonish evil. It's hard to define, but like comic book Namor would be like, listen, I, I hate you surface dwellers. You've done me wrong. Just leave me alone. And you're like, yeah, I kind of get it. This Namor is expecting way too much. Uh, I can't go into what he wants, but I'm like, bro, you're kind of dumb. Your plan was never going to work. Uh, and, and you just do not command the kind of respect that I think the comic book version did. So, that's the one part of the movie that failed for me. Also, again, you know, seeing a bunch of blue-skinned Atlantean people, it's always like, oh, this looks stupid as hell. <laughs> you know, it's it's real hard to get those water effects right. I don't know why they felt they had to use Namor. There is kind of a thematic thing where Wakanda and whatever they named Atlantis in this thing, it's like Nuck Chuck, uh, you know, kind of share the same history of being colonized uh, people, you know, subjugated, whatever. And he's like, we're just like you. We're just like you, Wakanda. And I'm like, yeah, there's like something there. But ultimately, I, I don't know. That didn't work for me. But anything with the Wakandans, this movie looks beautiful. This is what happens when, this is why Marvel is beating DC, is DC very much finds a guy and basically tells him, hey, make a Marvel movie like, a like make a movie that feels like 20 years old. And that's how you get Black Adam. It's like, make like Iron Man 1. Make the most basic bitch superhero thing. And Marvel has now gotten to the point where they're like, well, we did all the basic bitch superhero origin stories. We're done with all that. Now we can just tell Ryan Coogler, like, go nuts, dude. Like, have fun. And he gets some beautiful shots. Uh, there's just some beautiful imagery. And it's just so much more exciting than the paint by numbers 
uh, DC things they're doing now. Not every DC movie, but uh, Black Adam was such a disappointment if that's the future of the DC universe. Now, granted, it's a risky strategy. I don't know how Marvel keeps finding guys who are able to execute so well on this. And they've obviously made some mistakes. But uh, Ryan Coogler is clearly a winner and a guy who you basically tell, what, you want to make two, two hours and 40 minutes? Sure, fine. And uh, would I have cut a little bit out of it? Maybe, but <laughs> it worked out. Ultimately, I don't know, I don't like to do numbers, but I mean, if I had to give it like a score, I know this is, I know this is like the basic bitch score, but I'd be like eight out of 10 is the best movie I've ever seen. No. Um, honestly, if you cut out all the stuff I didn't like, you could almost get it to a nine. The problem is that Namor stuff, I feel just drags it down. It's like, it's honestly a distraction. Uh, I wish they had kind of just focused more on Wakanda. I, I don't know what else you could have done there, but all the stuff, I'm like, I don't care about the Atlanteans. I don't want to deal with any of this. It, it feels unnecessary to introduce them. I did like, everybody was complaining about Namor being able to fly. I'm like, no, that's pretty cool. Like, it's scary to have a weird dude with fucking wings on his feet flying around after you. I like that. Uh, <laughs> anyway. So, I like the movie. Now, I, I am able to release a review tomorrow. So tomorrow, I will have up a review that will have spoilers. How does it compare to Infinity War? You can't even really compare them. They're like two different things. Uh, let me see in the chat. And Did I get any Super Chats here? No. So, no Super Chats to react to. All right, let me see if I can read through a couple questions here. I don't give a shit about Marvel spoilers. Am I alone? I don't think so. I will say there is no after credit sequence, which is like good because the movie ends on, let's be clear, the movie ends on a somber note. It's still talking about, you know, it's it's ultimately about respecting Chadwick Boseman. It would be kind of stupid to go from a tribute to Chadwick Boseman to, and uh, Cybertron is coming in with the red lightsaber in the third one. It's no, they're not doing it. They did have a little... I mean, this isn't a spoiler. It said Black Panther will return, but I think we knew that. Do they use the mutant word? I cannot confirm or deny that, because that is a spoiler. How is Tobey Maguire in the movie? He's fantastic. The Tisha Rice is very good. Hi, everybody. You having fun tonight? They said no. No one's having fun. Can you imagine if Vito got kicked out halfway through the film for being white? <laughs> uh, I will say this. For all the talk of critics need to give up their seats to people of color, uh, my audience was full of Whitey, so Whitey did not give their uh, Whitey did not give up their seats to black people. Sadly. All right. After all the stuff we know about the vaccine, he's still using anti-vax in his vocabulary. That's correct. Uh, definitely waiting for streaming on this one. Well, I'll I'll say this: uh, they're gonna have trouble with the fact that it's two hours forty minutes. But uh, Black Panther has the black audience. You know, you can, you can talk about you like that or you don't like that, but um, I, mo a lot of black people are going to see this movie, and good for them. They have their, their heroes or whatever, and um, I'm excited to see where they go from here. You know, uh, we'll see. I think, I think this is good. Someone send a super chat. You don't have to send me a super chat. Are you the guy who was at the Dave Chappelle Netflix protest? Yes. All right, where does it rank on the MCU list? Um, I know a lot of people are going to put it in the top ten. I was talking to a friend of mine outside the theater, a black gentleman. He says it's uh, his number one Phase 4 movie. I guess this is technically the last movie of Phase 4, is that correct? He said better than No Way Home. And uh, I'd agree with him. I think this is better than No Way Home. Uh, no Way Home, it's fun, it's fan service -y, but it doesn't really have an emotional core to it. So, you know, I, I, I think I would enjoy this movie more. Uh, Coogler did good. Okay, we're probably going to lose... Alright, I have to go to my car. I'm going to get in my car, and then I will restart the stream. So the stream's probably going to go out because I'm going into a concrete bunker. Here we go. Gotta get to my car. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else worth saying. How many good white people? How many good black people? <laughs> there's a lot of bad white people. That's a good point. That's a good point. Is uh, What's his name's going to be mad about this movie? 
All right, hold on. How do I get to my car? I think I gotta go that way. I had to park lower in the garage. Okay, I'm in my car, so hopefully it gets better. Okay. U-turns here. Okay. Well, folks, what can I say about Black Panther Wakanda? Wakanda. Uh, yeah, if we're going by the Ryan Kennel scale of movies, there is only one, I think there's only one good white person in the movie. I'm thinking. There's one good white person and I think, like, there's one, two, like, ten. There's at least, like, 30 bad white people. Very on the nose for current Hollywood. It did not like that, as we say. It's a woke disaster, folks. It's so woke. It's not woke, it's just sad. It's a sad movie. Is it worth seeing? Uh, if you want like a fun movie, no. If you want like a kind of, what would even be the word? Yeah, well, it is fun. You know what? There were some jokes I was laughing. The audience was laughing. We were having a good time, but again, it is a very somber, uh, kind of dark movie for a lot of it. Um, so if you want a more, it's definitely a more serious film. It's not like a turn off your brain kind of thing. So if you want that, it's good. I don't know if that's going to hurt it though, because I think a lot of people, a lot of people right now do not want a movie that is very challenging because they're like, listen, man, my life sucks. Why don't I want to watch somebody else's life suck? That's kind of the problem with making movies in the time of, uh, what do you call it, in the time of inflation and sickness and whatever else, is that audiences are like, my God, like even me, I'm like, if this movie had come out like a year ago, I would have been like, I can't, I can't deal with it. There's too much going on in my own life. I got too much of my own grief to deal with. I don't want to deal with fucking what's his name. Is that blocked off? No. So I thought the freeway was blocked off. So it's possible that might hurt the movie if people hear it's not, like, super-duper fun. How was Namor? As I've said, Namor was a disappointment for me. Uh, and... ...who worked fine as, like, a character to bounce uh, some dialogue off of. But ultimately, her as Ironheart... Uh, well, you'll, you remember what I said about the CG not being so great? You'll see. Let's just leave it at that. You're going to have fun with that CG, I tell you what. Uh, yeah, I can't get into, I can't like fully review it, let's be clear. I'm not allowed to. You have to wait for tomorrow for my review. But, uh... 
Ironheart as a character, pretty forgettable. I, I didn't. I mean, she was fine. Um, but in terms of like adding to the action scenes and stuff, kind of fell flat. I felt. Namor versus Aquaman, who wins? Uh, I think what's his name is a more. I think it was a really. But again, that's just because I know how great comic book Namor is, so I'm biased. I think people who haven't seen the comic books might like him more. I just look at the comics and I go, Namor is like fucking great. <laughs> like if I had to pick. If, if, you sh if I read a couple comics before making a movie, I would go, oh, there's nothing we need to change. I don't know why Ryan Coogler felt like he needed to change Namor, uh, give him a Mayan background or whatever else. I guess I kind of get why they did that. Again, the story uh, digging a little bit into the idea that these are two different colonized nations, the Mayans and the Africans. But, uh... I still think you could have kept Namor as a scary little swimmer psychopath. Namor's so great. <laughs> he's going, oh god, he's swimming right towards us! What are we gonna do? Why do they call her Iron Heart? Does she have a vitamin deficiency? That's pretty good. How's the film? Uh, very good film. Like I said, I'm a baby. It had me crying at like times. I think I, I think I cried five times. I cried at the beginning. I cried when a thing happened to a character. I cried at the end, and then I cried when the end kept going. So that's four. Oh, and I cried when she had a moment. Yeah, five different times, but two of them were during the ending. Because the ending, you're like, oh, that was a pretty good ending. That was pretty sad. And it keeps going, and you're like, oh, man, why does it keep going? Why does it keep going? I didn't say it sucked. Is it worth seeing for my birthday? Let's put it this way. Do you like... Do you like Marvel movies? And do you like black people? I mean, ultimately, don't see this movie if you're racist, because you're not going to have a good time. I can tell you that. If you're black, you'll probably have a real good time. If you're white, I don't know what to tell you. But I'll, I'll also say this, you know, like sometimes in movies, and this is where I'm going to start getting into trouble and sounding racist. Sometimes in movies, I feel like uh, the black characters are written in a way that it's hard for me to relate to them. I don't know if I can think of an exact example there. You know, but just like there's like so many cultural differences where I'm going to go, well, I don't really relate to this person in their culture. But... Let's be real. The Wakandans, even though they're speaking in, like, African accents and have, like, African iconography, they're acting like Americans. They're making jokes. You know, they're slapping each other on the back, whatever else. It's a very... For all this talk of being like, oh, it's such an African movie, I'm like, it's an American movie. This is, like, the most... This culture, even though they all go, we are Wakanda, we are the, the greatest... I'm like, you guys are just acting like Americans with a little more like tribal aspect to it, you know? It's clear the movie is written by Americans for Americans. Uh, all these people go, oh, it's so respectful to African culture. I'm like, not, when you really get down to it, like, not really, it's not really treating them the way, you know. These are, it's a bunch of Americans who just happen to live in a place called Wakanda. Which is fine, it makes it, you know, you go, okay, I can relate to these guys. I, I, I you know, you can imagine uh, getting a beer with Black Panther and all her friends. Like, you totally relate to them. What's going on with Vito 2? I'll tell you what's going on with Vito 2. Vito is is running on fumes. Alright, so this past year, um, my last Jedi video has been demonetized. That used to make, that video used to make me maybe like 300 bucks a month just sitting there. Now it's completely demonetized. The old videos, the Rise of Skywalker video, the Stormtrooper video, uh, they're not getting views anymore. So all my old content has completely dropped off YouTube's radar. They've changed the algorithm. They don't push the essays anymore because they're pushing out shorts 
and whatever else. Oh yeah, the, the last Jedi video is completely demonetized. If you watch it, I make zero dollars. It is uh, a, a video that was like literally helping pay my bills. Yeah, uh, it sucks. I might re-upload like a version, like an uncensored version. But the last time I did that, they nobody watched it. I did that for my DC EU video. A video that again was making me a ton of money. They demonetized it, and I. So my my experience on YouTube, what a lot of people don't get about me, is they go, "You must be raking it in," and they go, "Out of my top videos, Last Jedi's demonetized. A complete rundown of the DC Cinematic Universe is demonetized. My Berkeley video is demonetized. My other Berkeley video is demonetized. My vaping the bathwater video is demonetized. So." I am making no money from any of that stuff. And some of that stuff is like, again, the most popular videos on my channel. Where if they weren't demonetized, I would be making great money. So, uh, the reason I had to stop doing Vito 2 was because everything dropped off. And I went, listen, I wanted to build up a second channel, uh, but I don't have the time to do it. Like, I have to put those videos on my main channel so I can get you know, 10,000, 15,000 hits, make 50 bucks a video, and just put it in the bank. Because, uh, let's be real, we're entering a time of great economic uncertainty uh, for me and all of you as well. So, uh, I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy that I had to change my plans. But ultimately, I can put those videos on my main channel and get a couple extra views money in the bank. So that's what I got to do. Uh, we'll see. It might change around. I might be making a mistake. I might be tanking my channel by doing short form news stuff. But I've had some revelations as of late. One of the revelations is I don't want to keep sinking every hour of every day into making videos about other people's content. Like, I want to make my own content. I want to make comedy. I want to make comics, whatever else. So... We're in a transitory period. Thank you to everybody who stuck with me uh, during this time of, again, great economic uncertainty. I'm just trying to keep my head above water. But basically, uh, as of now, none of my old videos make any money. The only videos that are making me any money are the ones that I upload the month that I upload them. Uh, I have no back catalog to rest on, which is fine. I'm happy. Uh, the podcast is going great. That's making me money. Some of you support me on Patreon. I may do... All right, there's a cop right next to me, so let's drive very straight. Uh, I may do a, a Patreon drive at some point where I go, hey, listen, if you really want more video essays, uh, I just need you guys to fund them directly because I can't fund them with ad revenue. But I do have one more. I, I have a couple more video essays coming up the, down the pipeline. I have one about Ghostbusters 2016 that I've been holding on to for a while. So you're still going to get that stuff. It's just uh, it's a time of great transition for all of us. Anyway. Uh, all right. Sorry to rant about that. Yeah. Well, the comic book is also going to be a big part of my master plan. For those of you who don't know, I've spent the last... Honestly, I've spent about a year working on it, which is not something to brag about. It should not probably take a year to make a comic book. But let's be real, I've never made a comic book before. I'm going to be okay with saying there's a learning curve to the process, and I figured it out. And if the comic book... Uh, if a lot of people back the comic book, and I can make that a yearly or bi-yearly thing, where I go, hey... You know, you don't have to donate money to me. You don't have to watch ads on my videos, put your ad blocker on. I don't care. Just buy this stupid comic book once or twice a year and make a living from that. That would be great. That's a dream. Uh, you know, and hopefully I know how to make a good comic book and you guys actually want to read it instead of going, I'm not giving you any more money for this. Making money is very challenging. <laughs> uh, people ask, they're like, are you a full-time YouTuber? I'm like, well, technically, but it's literally could fall apart at any moment. Like, I'm doing this by the skin of my teeth. Can you play the RoboCop theme while you're driving? Uh, I don't think I can, sadly. 
I wish I could make the chat bigger. Is that an option? Um, can you make the chat bigger on here? Uh, I guess not. All right, well, if I get in an accident, I'm sorry. Do OnlyFans? I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I wonder if there's somebody who wants a disgusting fat man feed. Uh, we're also doing a live show. Well, the, the podcast is going well. If you guys listen to The Biggest Problem in the Universe, that's actually, you know, uh, really helping my income out. How did I get into the theater? Somebody hooked me up. They got invited. They didn't want to go, so they let me go in their place. What Tim's, what film series do you want to be extended? Was that the question? Honestly, I don't know if, I don't, I'm not a big franchise guy. I think standalone videos here, or standalone movies are great. Very rarely are sequels good. I can't think of any movie I want a sequel to. What are you wearing? A sexy lingerie, red. A nighty. See-through gown. Well, I am going to go home, and I'm going to record my actual review. We'll be home in, like, ten minutes, and it'll be up tomorrow. i got to play by the rules of the embargo. I can't break embargo. Uh, but ultimately, I really hope that the anti-woke crowd... What's my favorite manga? Battle Angel Alita. I really hope the anti-woke crowd doesn't go after this movie... I would, uh, I would be surprised if they're that stupid to try and say there's something wrong with Black Panther. Like, guys, you just gotta accept that sometimes movies have, like, a slight amount of politics. Like, this idea that we should make, like, movies with no politics, it's like, no, you can have some politics. And the politics of Black Panther are not, like, overpronounced. They're, like, honestly, honestly, the politics of Black Panther are so subtle that it's possible that the anti-woke crowd, like, won't even be able to make sense of them. They'll go, I don't know if it was woke. I don't really get it. But I think they will, I think they will be upset that there aren't any good white characters or whatever. I mean, luckily, luckily, uh, Black Panther's not fighting against a white guy, because then they would just be talking about that, but he's fighting against a brown guy, so how's that woke? Black and brown people hate each other in the real world, so it just makes sense. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I was talking to my buddy after the show, again, a black guy, and he goes, listen, man, there's a lot of strife between the blacks and the browns. Like, Ryan Coogler knows about that shit. He knows that, like, even though we should be allies, like, sometimes we fucking hate each other. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's, there's some of that. Like, I wish they had dug into it a little deeper. On Honestly, I wish they had dug into the politics a little deeper. Yeah, we'll see what we'll see what Doomcock, the white supremacist, has to say about this. Doomcock is fucking insane. I watched Doomcock's review of the last James Bond movie, and he goes, "Well, that's just it. Hollywood's trying to kill all the white people." And I'm like, "This guy is legit a clan member." Doomcock sounds like a clan member. His videos are insane. Go watch his review of. Bond, No Time to Die, where he goes, this is Hollywood trying to destroy male, white men. What? I'm like, what are you talking about? Why? He's like, because they made Bond cry. I'm like, bro, if I was an international super spy that was, had my life constantly being put in danger at every, like, fucking moment, I would have more than one emotional breakdown. I would be a nervous fucking wreck. Like, these movies, these movies are trying new things. If you want a Bond movie where he's just a cool guy who shoots people, you literally have 60 years of that to go watch. Like, why do you, why did you need that again? You already have it. Now, that's what these guys don't get, is they're like, I just want the same thing I've already seen before. And it's like, well, if you want that, just, you have it. Do you, do you know how many Bond movies there are? You can just go, oh, and that's the other thing, I go, you know, we just want it the way it was before, because the old movies are great. And I go, yeah, what's, when's the last time you watched Moonraker? When's the last time you really sat down and said, I want to watch Moonraker? 
you're not re-watching these old films because they're like, they've aged, they're dated. You already know everything about the characters and what's going to happen. All right, so we're trying a couple new things out, and I don't think evolving the James Bond character to be like, hey, I, I bet being a super spy is not nearly as cool as James Bond makes it seem. I bet it is really dangerous, and a lot of your friends die, and you probably develop some debilitating drug and alcohol addiction. It's like, that's interesting. Why, well, and if you want, like a, like a again, a basic action spy thriller, I mean, there's other options for that, but just go watch the old James Bond movies. You can watch GoldenEye again. That shit all holds up. GoldenEye's a, I would watch GoldenEye again if I really felt like I needed that in my life. Right, real men don't cry, and Hollywood's trying to make men into women, or whatever else. It's not woke, it's that... Uh, let's put it this way. How many movies do you watch from the 1910s? How many Clark Gable films are you going back and watching? You're not, because they're dated, because it's boring. Because, like, storytelling at that point was, like, hitting, you know, very basic, heroic tropes. Now, there were some people who subverted that, and those are the movies that probably have remained interesting over the years. But I would say, like, the majority of the old Bond films, if you tried to show them to a kid now, they'd be like, oh, this kind of sucks. Okay, because the subversion back then was like, what if a Chinese guy had a razor hat? And like, oh, it looks really stupid and shitty. Anyway, they're making men and uh, women equal, which we want. But it's not feminizing men. Men cry. I cry. I cried at Black Panther five fucking times. I don't understand saying that James Bond crying means he's not a man. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I, I, were you guys all raised in like psychopath households or like when your friends died your friend died you know your fellow whatever because that's what James Bond's crying about if, you're, if your lover died and you cried when I go stop acting like a fucking woman no you'd go yes this is the appropriate emotional reaction that bitch like that's not <laughs> it's more <laughs> whatever it's interesting that we're trying some stuff out and I don't, I don't think most people disagree with Daniel Craig's James Bond. <coughs> a little more fucked up in the head. You watch Breakfast at Tiffany's and it was boring. Right. Well, time, the, 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 time's arrow marches ever forward, folks. Uh, these guys, it's the same with comic books. These guys go, oh my God, comic books were so great in the 70s. Motherfucker, go back and try to read comic books from the 70s. It's literally like, oh no, the vulture, I'll swing on a web to stop him. Oh, you got me again, Spider-Man. It's not good. It's fine. It's like, you like it's cool from a pop art aesthetic and you see the origins of the characters. But like the idea that going back in time, it was some golden age of storytelling. No, it, we still have bad storytelling now. Like people are still learning how to make good movies. Yeah, it was like Adam West Batman. Adam West Batman was a commentary on how stupid comic books were. Because people of the time had read comic books and they went, those are for kids. Because they were. They were fucking stupid. <laughs> so then Batman came along and he's like, what if there was an actual guy who was Batman? I'm like, that would be fucking hilarious because Batman is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. Alright? Like, the, the vintage comics, it was like Superman... You know, and this is all golden age stuff. I know guys are going to go, whoa, the silver age it evolved. I know that it got like a little bit better and they did some interesting stories. But the majority of comic book stories are complete trash and always have been. And uh, yeah, now, now they're trying some new stuff out because, you know, people love gay characters and representation. Whatever. Just let them try it out. If it, if it sucks, uh, sure. But stop being so, like, resistant to it, I guess. There are some doozy storylines back there. Man, they fucking... Uh, what would they do? With Spider-Man, they made him a clone, and they made him not a clone. Uh, I'm giving I'm giving an 8 to Black Panther, which... Um, if I had to put it on the Marvel... If I'm putting it on the Marvel scale of movies, it's a 9. If I'm putting it on the movie scale of movies, and and let's be clear, I don't think any Marvel movie has ever gotten a ten on the Marvel scale. I'm trying to think, 
What's the best Marvel movie? Like Endgame? Not Endgame. Uh, Infinity War. Yeah, there's there's no the you know what the only Marvel movie I would point to as a ten would be like the first Iron Man, just because I think it's just it's so perfect, it's so perfectly written, it's so concise, it does everything it needs to do. Um, I'm trying to think. Winter Soldier's good. Winter Soldier's another nine. You know what? I, I I don't know if I can make put this movie up there with Winter Soldier then. I guess this would be an eight point five on the Marvel scale. And on the actual movie scale, it's like an eight, maybe a seven point five. Isn't Vito almost home? Well, I was gonna stop and get something to eat, but I don't know what. You guys wanna go to Taco Bell? Uh, what's open? What time is it? I don't even know what time. It is. It's like 1 a.m. Is Taco Bell open? Panda Express. Uh, is it 11 in California? No. Well, I went in the movie at 7 and the movie's two and a half hours, so... Okay, I guess it could be like 11. I would say that movie is... Yeah, just the fact that it, like, feels like an actual director made it makes it so much better than most Marvel movies. I'd say it's, like, it's complicated. It's, like, hard to nail it down. Because it's also different from other Marvel movies. I can't say, like, oh, it's better than Guardians of the Galaxy because they're, like, such different movies. Black Panther, again, is a film about grief and loss. It almost, like, doesn't feel like it belongs in the Marvel Universe at all. Um... Tacos this late? No, oh, whatever. Yeah, they got the director of Who Killed Captain Alex. Did I like Spider-Man Enter the Multi? Oh yeah, that one's real good. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I mean, I might also have like Out of the Theater. Uh, ah. See, but now I'm thinking about all the holes in it. Again, putting it in eight is just safe. The problem is, again, all the Namor stuff. I think about I think about the Namor stuff, and I go, "Fuck, man!" I've, if I could have just had like the really artistic Ryan Coogler fucking shots and all the Wakanda stuff, that shit was honestly a nine. The problem is, all the Namor stuff is like a six or a seven. And it really drags it down. Like, this movie has highs, but then this movie has lows. So, uh, yeah, you know what? <sighs> Again, I'm just going to put it at a safe 8, because I feel bad giving it, like, a 7.5. I feel bad. What's my favorite late food? That's a good question. I don't have a good late night spot. Doesn't Andor seem more like older movies and shows than it takes time to establish characters and stakes? Um, I don't know if that's an... I don't know. I don't know if I can compare that to older films. Maybe like a certain... Kind of feels like very 70s Andor. It, does, it, is, it is slower. It is more methodical, which is, is exciting. It isn't just like running around. I should have gave my ticket to a black family, that's true. Get a cheeseburger and fries. I never go to In-N-Out because I don't want to wait in a stupid line for a cheeseburger. It's like, who cares? It's a fucking cheeseburger. And the line's like around the block. I'm like, guys, I could get a better cheeseburger than this. I like fucking McDonald's. Anyway, to all my black viewers, I don't think I have any black viewers. Uh, I, don't, I hope I have some black viewers. Somebody said earlier they were black. Vito's a hot dog guy. You know what? It's funny you bring that up. Before the show, I had to go to, I went to Ikea because I was trying to get some brackets for my shelf. And I got some, uh, I got some Ikea hot dogs. And I'm going to say this. Ikea hot dogs fucking suck. 
Oh, those are terrible, terrible hot dogs. Terrible. I didn't realize it's hot. It could be that bad. Alright. What am I getting? What do I want? I kind of want a cheesy gordita crunch. But they charge, they like charge like a lot for that thing now. I don't know why. Hi, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Give me one good. sec. What can I get for you? Uh, one second. Alright. Did you guys have a box that comes with the cheesy gordita crunch? No. No. All right. Well, let me just get one cheesy gordita crunch then. Okay. And I guess that's it. All right. Five dollars and six cents. Thank you. Five dollars and six cents for a cheesy gordita crunch. You know the worst part is? I know on the app they have like a box. It is true. Getting the, getting rice in the burrito makes it pretty good. I feel like they made the cheesy gordita crunch worse. Chalupa combo. Maybe I should have got the chalupa combo. I know five dollars for one taco. I love how Americans can actually be polite when they want to, like when buying food. Well, yeah, I'm more very polite. You're right, I don't have the monetized videos to afford this uh, taco. I know, I could have, like, stopped the stream to order a taco box. I know, I have the app. But, uh, I felt like, I feel like pausing the stream just to order tacos is, uh... Cheap compared to UK prices. Well, the fucking, what do you call it? Got dang exchange rate. Quesadillas are seven bucks now. I feel like I've made a mistake paying five dollars for this uh, crunch. How much of these used to be? Like three bucks, two fifty, I think, back in the day. Is this like one taco? Earth and Sky has paid for twenty percent of my taco. Thank you, Earth and Sky. We have made four dollars for this stream, so we didn't even pay for one taco, and I didn't get a drink. Is it good, the cheesy gordita crunch? Honestly, it's not as good as it used to be. That's the other thing. I remember when the cheesy gordita crunch was like the greatest fucking thing, but I think they've like lowered the quality of the ingredients. How's it going, Buck? You need Doing any sauce? Good. Uh, no, I'm good. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Because the thing is, I don't think they have gorditas on the menu anymore. I could be wrong. So I think they only make the gordita shell for this one item. And that's why they're always fucking stale. You donate five if I got the Crunchwrap Supreme. I do like the Crunchwrap Supreme. I hate the Mexican pizza. Actually, you know what? I'm lying. I've never had a Mexican pizza. So I don't know why I threw shade. All I know is it looks disgusting, and I've had people tell me it is disgusting. So, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, folks? Order the Wakanda special. Don't they have a... I think they have a Wakanda Happy Meal. And I was like, I wanted to post. Hey, white, no white boy is allowed to order the Wakanda Happy Meal. Not allowed. Gorditas and chalupas are as much as a hamburger now. Oh, good point, John Doe. Good point. So we can be freeze framing. Yeah, I thought the whole point of a taco was that it's like crappy meat stuffed inside like a tiny tortilla, so it should cost. The taco used to be like 50 cents because the whole point was that like, well, yeah, because it's not a hamburger. It's not like an actual hamburger patty. It's like leftover junk meat uh, bound together with like oatmeal and paprika seasoning and shoved inside a thin piece of dough. And now it's like a buck fifty-nine for a taco, and you're like, well, what's the fuck point? I'll just get a cheeseburger at that point. Beef is like 80% beef. 
Yeah, it's uh, 80% beef, 20% oat binder. Every every Taco Bell taco is full of oatmeal to keep the meat sticking together. Uh, that's why the meat's so sticky. Oh, thank you. His name was crazy. I'm going to eat this oatmeal taco for you, buddy. Still like old El Paso. Ugh. The homemade shells. It used to be soy. Well, I think the ta Somebody keeps telling me that the tacos at Jack in the Box are not meat. Because they don't call them beef tacos. They just call them tacos. Oh, thanks, Tristan Mean. I'm glad I have some black people in my audience. And uh, I'll, t I'll say this. Wakanda forever. Monday night grifting us for talk. You don't have to not grifting. Well, I guess that is my thing. It is a grift. Uh, Welcome to the taco grift. It's true. A transgender woman got to see Black Panther tonight. I should be invited to more things. Vito Giswaldi, the transgender critic. Greedy feeding. I'm not greedy. I didn't. I didn't demand people pay for my taco. All right, well, here's the deal. Last Monday Night Grift was Halloween, so we weren't going to do it on Halloween. And then this Monday Night Grift, I had to go see Wakanda. Uh, that's the problem with Monday Night Grift. I'm not like these other streamers who uh, maintain a schedule, and that's why my channel sucks. Well, I'd be providing a veto review on the Taco Bell menu. The worst possible thing in my life that could happen is I become a food review channel, because then I will balloon to 8,000 pounds. And I don't think you guys want that. One time, one time I put up a burger review on Vito 2. It didn't get a lot of views. If I became a mukbang channel, I would weigh more than the sun. Oh, uh, thank you. I love my outro music. It's also my intro music. But, uh... Well, come on, baby. Let's do the drift. Burger King tacos, yes or no? I think they're the same as the In-N-Out tacos. Uh, the In-N-Out, or not In-N-Out, uh, Carl's, no. Jack in the Box. I like the Jack in the Box tacos, even though they're disgusting. Tier list on Vito 2. Uh, what's going on, big guy? That's their movie and their word. I think, I think the black... Uh, community is sharing Black Panther with us. It is funny at the end, though, because you see in the credits, like, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, two of the whitest motherfuckers who ever lived. <laughs> like, yeah, but they, they, you know, they're helping out the black community. I did have to have a thought where I'm like, I wonder what Jack Kirby would think seeing this movie. He'd probably be like, what the fuck are you people doing? I made these books for children. Now, actually, Jack Kirby took his stuff pretty seriously, I think. I think he was like, no, this is the exciting future of uh, sci-fi uh, and whatever else. Disneyland was good. I still haven't posted my Disneyland videos. I'll have to do that. All right, guys. I'm home. I'm going to eat a taco. Wakanda review. Let's hope I'm not uh, lazy, but hopefully it'll be up tomorrow. Have fun. Take care of yourself. We'll love you no matter how fat you get. No. I'm already too fat. I'm I'm working I'm working on that as well. You wanna see my amico? It's coming. Alright guys, I love you. Have fun. Bye bye.